Hi everyone, this is Greg from Greg's Whiskey Guide. I hope you're well and thank you for coming back or thank you for coming for the first time. I'm French, but I do, uh, let's say, 60 or 70% of my videos so far in English and 30% in French. And I hope I will be balancing a bit more to 50-50. Um, I'm not translating my French video to English, which is a lot of work. The website at the moment with the same name of the channel uh, is Mothball is uh, blocked uh, for technical reasons due to the uh, the host of the website. It's a bit complicated to explain. Uh, I added a word on the website uh, main page so you can hand over to it. Uh, all things about me are uh, details, social media and stuff are in the description below uh, the video as well as the, the links I'm going to give you about uh, the channel that initiated this challenge as well and also the, I'm going to say something I don't say often because I see a lot of differences uh, between the people watching and the people liking uh, and, and so I have to ask for YouTube references referencement uh, uh, you know to to make the, the video shine more in the selection they uh, give to people if they pay tape whiskey etc if you don't give uh, likes and if you don't add comments the video will be drowned into the mass of other videos so if you like it of course if you don't like it don't uh, please give a thumbs up, uh, click the notification bell for the next videos and uh, leave a comment, uh, a comment and uh, maybe uh, give me your own selection. It could be cool. Thanks in advance. <laughs> okay, so that said, um, I'm answering here to a very cool channel called A Drum Divided, uh, held by uh, Swedish guys called Frederick and Emil, Frederick having uh, been previously holding the Whiskey Pilgrim channel, you might know. Um, great people, cool people, they also had me on a live show uh, doing blind samples for me. They're gonna have other guests also soon. They did have some in live shows as well. And they, uh, yeah, they're doing a really uh, cool, uh, overview of whiskey and sometimes other spirits so please uh, check them out and also check uh, some of the channels I will add below such as uh, Whiskey Quest who also answered to the uh, this whiskey challenge for instance. So for this whiskey uh, challenge the, the name the, the concept was named uh, start a whiskey collection with a 250 euros challenge. So 250 euros here is uh, around 300 dollars US dollars and uh, 400 Canadian uh, no Australian dollars for instance Canadian I don't know exactly it's in between I think and 215 uh, British pounds um, so uh, this is the fourth time I'm doing the video because I did some mistakes on the confusing bottle so uh, I'm gonna try to be shorter and not forget anything because I don't have the time to do uh, several hours <laughs> videos and then upload them uh, apologies um, okay so I will try not to mistake this time I'm gonna hide one of the lists because there are two lists yeah I, I like to complicate things sometimes I know uh, I'm sorry um, yeah my response to this challenge was to give you guys two selections two choices not only uh, one choices of a few bottles for 250 but I did choose it's a choice uh, you can uh, think it's not a good idea etc there uh, again if you have other ideas uh, let me know um, so I decided to do one a world whiskies collection proposal and two a Scottish whiskies only proposal. Um, for the first one, the world whiskies uh, collection, start your collection. I uh, chose to more or less conform to the First uh, Nations 
that this produce did produce whiskey in history. Um, unfortunately, because of some availability and uh, price issues, I had to withdraw Japan from those five countries, uh, five first producing whiskey countries. So you're gonna see the others. Uh, some of my Japanese collection is there. I did an entire one hour video about my collection and also the regulations. Uh, there was a great uh, also um, point made by um, my friend in Japan, Mac, uh, in his um, Kampai Planet <laughs> channel, sorry, um, and also uh, I really recommend if you like Japanese whiskies to watch a uh, live show with Max Salman from Kampai Planet, uh, and also to read the chat where I s try to add some um, infos as well and opinions, um, but. The problem is if I had to fit, to choose something fitting in my selection, I will have chosen this, you can see here, which is a Nika blended whiskey uh, released around the middle of the 2010, so maybe 14, I think, I'm not sure. Um, because it was a great compromise between uh, the a bit expensive now uh, single molds expensive for this selection also uh, and uh, the whiskies that they produce and that other companies produce that is not 100% Japanese so this one was a great one and it showed a lot of uh, Yochi and Miyagi-kyo character but unfortunately it was replaced by something called Nika Days, which I'm not crazy about at all, so I cannot recommend it. Uh, so no Japanese whiskies in this collection, uh, selection, I'm sorry, but there are more about Japanese whiskies coming out on my channel, uh, as I have, let's say, around 34, 35 whiskies from Japan, so I cannot, uh, I can uh, speak about them separately. Okay, let's not lose more time. I'm going to present you a bottle that is not the one exactly that I've selected, but I don't have it, the one I wanted to select. So this is a little brother of, uh, of the bottle I wanted to choose. At least little brother, brother is the Powers 12 years old uh, blended whiskey, triple distilled, and uh, the one I, um, this is still good, I recommend it, but some batch variations were a bit disappointing for me. This one, however, comes across stronger uh, flavor-wise, and it's also 46%, while this is 40. Um, Powers 12, and again, uh, I'm not crazy about the packaging, and also I'm not crazy about the fact that the mention of a 12 years old is so small. So I guess at some point they might withdraw it, and that's probably the reason why it's so small, which I don't like. Why Ireland? Because it's supposed to be one of the uh, the initial uh, country of whiskey before Scotland. There are some argue between the two countries, of course, but in a way Charles MacLean and others kind of gave them the, uh, um, the justification to call for being the first nation to do whiskey. And uh, whiskey and of course the monks did brought the art of distillation in Ireland from uh, the old Egypt and the Copts, the Christian Copts, so again monks, <laughs> it's all the time the same thing for wine and right and for spirits um, and the uh, which what was initially uh, distilled to do uh, perfume and makeup and not to drink uh, alcohol was perfected and then brought up to Ireland from around the 5th to the 15th century and uh, became Aquavite Ushkabo, water of life in English. Same, it means the same thing. Uh, and bear in mind at the beginning, uh, Ushkabo, uh, first whiskey, was not a whiskey uh, in contemporary terms. 
like for first wines and for instance medieval wines they add they were adding botanicals and spices and they were almost not aging it for uh, spirits uh, and even somewhere into amphoras for the wines well but it's a too long story uh, so basically uh, even in uh, nine, uh, 1494 for instance in Scotland when the Lindor Abbey distillery the initial one before it was rebuilt in, in contemporary times uh, they, the, the uh, spirit they were doing was not a whiskey exactly to contemporary terms it was kind of liqueur with botanicals and, um, and spices uh, and it was not aged or not aged for a long time so it took some it took a while to do something that could be called whiskey so this one is 60 uh, 59 to 60 euros here this one is a bit less I'm gonna still put this one on the table uh, or maybe I can put this if it stands which is not sure Ooh. We're gonna try. <laughs> uh, so this is my first choice. My second choice is of course a Scottish whiskey and I did the choice to pick uh, something called Elgin Classic. It's also the name of the range. You can find a port, a sherry, uh, also a rum finish and also uh, another wine type I forgot. Rum. And there are and a pitted one for instance single malt from Speyside and uh, north of Speyside uh, near the sea but not completely uh, close to the sea I had the chance to visit the distillery uh, this is here between 17 when on offer to 20 euros so I hear you already say as for uh, other choices uh, uh, today Oh, Greg, this is a 40% ABV, this is chill filtered, caramel added, blah, blah, blah. Man, you have sometimes to step back from those a bit gimmicky now uh, position from some that say everything has to be chill, uh, non chill filtered, 46%, etc., age stated. I think it's too tight, it's too narrow minded to think that. Of course, we have to tend to, to go to this goal if possible. But for instance, no age statement, uh, which I've been a lot critical in the past, and I'm still, I am still for some reason and for some whiskies, brings also, not necessarily here, okay, brings also some possibilities to work with a big palette of years and vintages and do something very special. And once again, and I'll be biased with the, this next sentence, I know this is true because I've experienced it this year. Blending whiskies from a real distillery, blending cask and not bottles, as I was doing before, from several ages, uh, several ca cask types, etc. And not being able legally to put on the label, you're going to see that soon, we're not allowed to say uh, everything that's there so we have to be a bit tricky to find a way and i think i've succeeded <laughs> to tell you between the lines this is age from this to this basically uh, a bit like my friend john does in his website you have to watch the circles to know the years tip uh comes back um if you go to the spreadsheet, you will understand what I mean. Um, but this, go back, going back to this, this is beautiful. This is simple, but this is super well made and quite consistent over the years. For something of 20 euros, this is very nicely floral, fruity. Uh, there's some vanilla, so it's typical space side. Uh, you have a, a also some tropical notes some uh, it's the esters give all these uh, tropical side uh, also the uh, vanilla exuberant vanilla uh, this is a space side even if it's probably from six to eight years old not more this is still delivering for me uh, even on ice believe me or not 
So this is a summer drum or a spring drum, let's say, that's perfectly crafted and that I really recommend and it will not be ashamed uh, in, uh, within a um, World Whiskies collection, in my opinion. Um, next, we're moving now to um, United States of America for which I did choose, I had to withdraw also uh, some bourbons that were a bit disappointing for me consistency wise, big names for Rosie's, Jim Beam, uh, what else? And also I am still discovering some references, I'm not uh, enough on the bottle to really recommend while this uh, since I tried it and even other batches and more recent ones I'm never disappointed and I know this is a bit more expensive we're moving from 20 to 60 euros but this for me is a must-have uh, in a wee collection this is not a bourbon because this hasn't in the mash bill 51% of corn but less we don't know how much because it's a bit of a secret uh, but this distillery that is starting distilling since uh, a few years has sourced a lot of things uh, but they do think and, and mature them and uh, monitor them in their own warehouses that are very specific warehouses heat cycled and with low ABV uh, to enter into casks uh, really uh, taken care of the of the of the spirit with a, a level that I have rarely seen in in a, in a demanding approach they have uh, this is 43 percent uh, so for the US people it's uh, 86 proof so this has probably uh, aside from in my opinion something like 30 40 percent uh, corn probably uh, this is probably some rye, uh, some uh, wheat, and maybe some malted barley in it. But anyway, this is so rich, so uh, intense for 43%. Uh, uh, flowers, uh, fruits, some ripe fruits, some fresh fruits, gentle oak, great caramel, some prunes. This is super rich, sweet spices, baking spices. This is super rich, super complex and for me must have in your collection and it 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 kills a lot of bourbons for me uh, just my opinion now moving on to the third choice uh, fourth choice it's, it's we're staying into uh, so we were in around maybe 17 18th century uh, I know we, there were illicit distilling before but this is basically we're moving uh, into time a bit more and around this time as well uh, Canada did have also did produce whiskey and for me this is the best value I found here um, this is a lot 40 hundred percent uh, rye uh, distilled in column and pot still this is a masterpiece I talked about it uh, a lot of times on my channel uh, beautifully fruity tropical exotic fruit up to Asian fruits and lychee for instance rose also floral notes uh, of rose uh, of course some caramel some baking spices some vanilla as well but this is complex and very special profile even compared to other rice and for 37 to 40 euros for me it's it's a bomb it's it's uh, really beautiful okay and we're gonna finish our world selection with something then replacing uh, Japanese whiskey but it was still in Asia and we're in India obviously I have to pick up this 1955 or so uh, and I don't have the details in my maybe I confuse with another one but yeah it's this theory which was built around that time from Bangalore and um, again you have the tropical there's no achievement but it ages uh, way more rapidly than Scottish whiskies with the angel share between 10 and 16 percent per year uh, instead of two or three percent in uh, Scotland. Angel Shell is the evaporation of the uh, 
of the alcohol uh, and, and the content <laughs> and the water as well from the cask during aging and uh, it's not only tropical this is also uh, this uses malted barley from the feet of the himalaya mountain uh, this has somewhere an indian style even if the peat it's slightly peated it's not uh, a peat from india but from scotland but uh, at 50 percent abv around 55 to 60 euros for me it's it's a beautiful whiskey uh, with a beautiful profile which stands up which is a bit different from the isla whiskies different from uh, the uh, Campbelltown whiskies this is different from the japanese whiskies this is uh, a whiskey on its own um, and i highly recommend it now i'm going to pause a second to go to the second part which is the scottish selection stay tuned okay thanks for being still there moving on to now the uh, scottish whiskey selection 250 euros challenge once again uh whiskies i can find here uh with no too much uh problems and going to uh, second market and, and everything first choice here is a lowlander whiskies i've been uh doing this selection yes by the uh official whiskey regions so lowlands spacesides highlands uh campbelltown and isla knowing that the other isles that surrounds you can see on the map uh, the, uh, the mainland which is called the mainland are included because they don't have more than they don't have three distilleries at least per island they can't be called a region so that's why all the other islands except isla which has 10 distilleries all the other um, islands are included in the highland region and if you want to be picky even the space side is included it's part of geographically the highland region but yeah let's stick to the official regions and maybe in another video i could do uh, another proposal giving me an idea my first choice for lowlands is uh, so my choice for Lowland, lowland sorry and my first choice for the scottish selection isn't a single malt but a blended malt why because i think this is beautifully crafted and really represents well the area while the uh some of the choices i could have made glenkinchi 12 uh ochentoshan american oak which i don't have by the way i don't have a contemporary version of ochentoshan uh anyway uh, rosebank is closed it's going to reopen but you can't find the, the whiskies i have i could have can find them easily so i didn't pick it bladnoch i have an old one which you can't find either <laughs> And I have the 10, which is now uh, 10 years old official, which is now replaced by the 11 I don't have. So I cannot speak about it. And same for, uh, I could have chosen a King's Barn, but I'm not sure you're going to find a King's Barn or a Lindor, which I don't have yet easily so this one is more available than those ones and uh, also i think it really beautifully shows the the, the style it's bottled at 46.2 um, i think yeah um, and this is uh, part of what they, this is a, an independent bottling from the douglas lang company and uh, they build up a, a thing which sort of remarkable regional malts in which they uh, chosen speci specific nicknames for each region uh, of Scotland and of course I could have done this selection only with them because they cover all the regions but it could be another topic uh, dedicated to this indie butler so um, and i'm not necessarily happy with all the other choices despite i love the brand and i love the the range uh, but here is for lowland so you find here typical fruitiness floralness light light fruitiness more towards citrus fruit uh, 
uh, nice floral notes but not heady flowers this is more for space side sometimes and highlands and not always vanilla you will always find vanilla except of course if you have heavily sherried heavily wine finishes and stuff which arrays this three character uh, sometimes um, and sweet spices and a light herbal profile so this is my choice for uh, 47 euros here for lowlands and I think it's a great great choice uh, now a bit more controversial uh, for the space side I did select this despite some people will shout at me because it's 40% ABV chill filter blah 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 yes but considering the, the the increase of price of some references such as Balvenie 12 or uh, the higher price point of better choices such as of course Glenlivet Nadura, uh, Bourbon or Old Rosso or Glenfar class 15 the, those and even it's debatable the, the the prices of those are a bit higher and of course Edredor 12 years old Caledonia was a great choice but for 250 euros uh, i really wanted to bring you five bottles so it's my choice lots of vanilla there lots of uh, nice sweet spices and lots of fruitiness and floralness typically from the space side and from glenlivet some peach some pineapple some uh, apricot uh, but a creaminess that I found is interesting this one is called first fill but it means first fill bourbon cask matured uh, pretty decent one for me a way better choice than the founders reserve it's really weak for me better balanced choice than a bit too uh, engineered uh, current 12 years old called double oak and if you want to see more about glenlivet head over please to my two videos about the brand I did and for instance comparing five different 12 years old of Glenlivet just saying have a look so for me nice representative choice from the space side or of course you had uh, and I put a bottle away you can replace it by the Glen Murray Elgin classic or the 12 years old which are a nice choice as well makes it too now moving to the highlands i could have picked a lot of things but i don't have for instance the new bulbler range here i haven't tried it i tried the new glen uh no highlands um i haven't tried a new dalmore 12 and the price point isn't making it to this list uh, uh, it's no longer uh, for me good value brand I'm sorry to say that but it's what I think uh, price wise I could have picked uh, Ben Nevis but the availability is a bit complicated now so I picked this sure value sure asset 46% uh, not super waxy compared to some older uh, Klein leashes I tried a lot of Klein leashes even 40 uh, 37 years old Klein leashes but still this really represents well for me the distillery it's a good compromise uh, for this wildcat which is also represented here wildcat character distillery so uh, quite some punch some uh, robust spices and herbs it's this white mustard and and um, chamomile a bit uh, characteristic of, of the profile which i i think personally uh, kind of mustardy as well spices some waxy uh, notes uh, some citrus fruit and a nice floral background with vanilla so great value uh, here uh, around 50 euros so highlands are there sorry next choice for Campbelltown the natural choice would have been of course Springbank 10 but the problem is Springbank 10 availability now is is uh, is a really uh, worrying question and uh, even if I still have some 
I don't have the latest batches uh, and it's not easy to find so I have to pick something a bit more easy even if in France you don't find it everywhere but I managed to find it without breaking the bank is as well uh, for around 45 euros of course I had to pick uh, this Glen Scotia which is for me one of the best and which I prefer I'm sorry to the 15 and to the Victoriana this is 46% this is American oak matured and then uh, Pedro Jimenez sherry so a richer more uh, sweeter and more sugary type of uh, sherry uh, Xerès en français is sherry uh, classic Cam Campbelltown malt it's written it's true there's a little funk but less important than in Springbank and less important than in some limited editions of uh, Glen Scotia I'm going to speak about later on um, this is beautifully fruity floral super balanced super sexy uh, the packaging is awesome as well I'm going to put the bottles uh, the, the, the boxes later on as you can see this is nice old style uh, mixed with new style old style is here with the, the silk screen uh, that were, was current in the 90s for many uh, Scottish mm, distilleries um, beautiful whiskey I, I, I can't say more now uh, this is my choice for uh, Campbelldown and this will be no surprise for you, I think, or for many of you, that my Isla choice is this super classic, super efficient, super beautiful, super subtle, uh, around 55 euros here, Lagavulin 16, uh, the Isla flagship maybe uh, of the of, of all the, the whiskies for many people. Many people discovered Isla whiskies here moderately uh, pitted uh, with this expression because it's 16 years old uh, because it's a 43 percent so it's still a good compromise yes it has some additives and chill filtering but still even if there have been some batch very worrying batch variation in 2015 for instance where they had to replace almost replace it by adding a new uh, addition to the classic molds, the Kolila single mold, because there were shortage of, uh, of Kolila at that time, and the batches that were out were getting uh, more oaky and uh, with a poorer cast quality. So they withdrew it for some time, and uh, when it reappeared, it was better than ever, <laughs> if I may say. Uh, so, yeah, great value. You have the, this bonfire smoke you have this gently maritime notes you have this beautiful delicate smoke um, you have still this hint of what is in the higher ABV and indie bottling and 12 years old cast string versions this kind of leather hay mix of uh, mix of farmy hay leathery notes which is also part of this character there's a mainly refill cask, so this, this is interesting to highlight the distillery character. This is a great value. I, I, can, I won't speak for hours. So this is my choice. Let me just put the, bo the boxes aside. Stick around.